Welcome, welcome to a happy Monday in the Rick Helps Real Estate Show where we try to make sense of this crazy Arizona market and make you an expert because we're going to look at the numbers and try to figure out how high our listing is going to go in Arizona. When uh, we had a peak in the 55, 60,000 range in the 2006 to 2008 time frame. Good morning, everybody. And uh, so are we going to get there again? So we're going to look at some things and I'm probably going to have more questions than answered answers and that's providing i can speak today here we are today we're at 11,388 listings <clears throat> that's still way way below normal and i'll show you the chart in a minute we have 4,876 homes come on the market past seven days that's this blue surface area you see here and 3311 go under contract and that's not bad that they're kind of flattened out um and it's uh We've been between 3,100 and 4,100 homes go under contract on a seven-day period. So it's not like it dropped off the face of the earth. But the difference is 1,500 units here. The difference between the number of homes going under contract and the number of homes that are coming on. And that's why we have the increase that we have. So um, here's where we're at. Um, they update this on Saturday nights at the Cromford uh, Report. And it's going to be... We just passed 2020 levels, so it's not not huge. If I go back and say, well, where were we in 2006? Uh, let's see if this will let me click. That one's, oh, that's news and commentary. So that one's not going to let me click it, but I'll show you in a couple minutes here. So, um, so we are definitely taking off like a rocket when it comes to listings coming up, but I don't see sales nosediving. In fact, I was showing homes in uh, Mesa this weekend didn't see um, a lack of traffic. I was bumping into buyers out there. Certainly not as brisk as it has been like February and March. You would run into several people waiting at the door. You know, you get your little 15 minute window and you better be out in 15 minutes. <laughs> Moving from Washington State, looking to buy something in the future. Give me a buzz. What part of Washington State? That's where I'm from. So here's the numbers. This is interesting. And this is my question. My question is, are people going to move when they have mortgages in the 4% or below range. Look at this. Share of mortgage holders with mortgage rates below 4%. 53%. Share of properties without a mortgage, 37%. So who's going to budge here? If, if half of you have a mortgage under 4%, you're going to move if you have to. But you're probably not going to move if you get out of a 3.8 mortgage and you're going up to 5.8 because that's where it's rocking and rolling today. Um, so I don't, I think it's going to be much harder to hit that level of 27,000 listings that we consider uh, a normal market. Uh, we could be a balanced market by the middle of August, and the Cromford report is is validating that now saying you know based on where we're headed we could be at a balanced market but we could be at a balanced market just because sales are down to a level and listings are down but i don't think listings are going to have to be at twenty-seven thousand to become balanced if that makes sense but i think as time goes on it's going to be harder and harder to get those listings to show up for that one reason 53 percent of you out there have a rate below four percent and i know we've talked about that a little bit before but i i dug up the data yesterday and Here's the average list price per square foot. Um, people, this is the price that they're listing. Now, we're still showing about 3,500 homes every seven days lowering their list price. So some haven't got uh, the memo yet that uh, things are starting to slow down. So you'll see this start to come down. It's got a slight dip there from, uh, let's see if I get my mouse to it here, right? Yeah, from 312 to... Well, I went down 40 cents. So <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to watch that and see, you know, how how fast the list rates, the uh, list prices start start coming down. Good morning from Mesa. Uh, Kim J, we're under 4% but retiring soon. Want to buy our kids, want to be by our kids in Arizona. We're on the Columbia River. Uh, I drove past the Columbia River going up there on vacation last year, going just outside of Portland coming over and uh, towing a travel trailer and it was beating the buggers out of me the wind on that river it had white caps anyway why digress so <laughs> look at the number of price changes price changes look at how that spiked up 
and it says number of new listings uh, 22 28 but I'm tracking it right off the MLS and I've got a number down here of about 3459 but whether or not they're close doesn't make a difference but it, it tells you that people are saying well that didn't work let's put this price down where it where it should be long and that's uh that's a wise thing to do if you're a if you're a seller now if your price too high you're just going to get ignored and uh um, but i think you know buyers are savvy so buyers are probably going to pull you down now where back in february and march they would just walk past you they would think well somebody's going to buy that I know we had an open house at a listing once and the buyers came in and they were from Seattle and, and uh, um, I wasn't there at the open house, but the agent that was holding it said, um, well, we already have an offer. And they go, okay, well, we're out. We don't want to get in the bidding war. And they just left. And uh, nobody makes an offer if they think they're going to have to compete with you. That's the mentality that we had out there. Oh, I'm just going to get my butt kicked, so I'm not even going to play in that sandbox. But... That's changing now. So I think buyers are going to come in, and if you're overpriced, I don't think they're going to ignore you so much as they're just going to say, well, let's shoot them an offer and see if this has any legs. I think you'll start to see more and more of that. Uh, Harry says, wonder how many start taking their homes off the market if they aren't getting what they thought they could. Um, that will show up under canceled listings, and uh, I'll take a look at that and see if that's increasing or decreasing. You know, there's people that try that. They just, uh, I want to get this. If I can't get that, I'm taking it off the market. And it all depends on their own financial situation. They may have a goal in mind that say, I have to have this amount of money before I leave this house. So uh, cancellations will probably increase, uh, but more likely it'll be expired. Because usually they don't cancel. They just let it run until the agreement is done and then it shows up as expired. So when we look at some of the rates, um, here we are here. It's... Um, Mortgage-backed security prices are significant weaker so far today. That's this morning. This strong downward momentum in MVS will most likely result in higher mortgage rates for today. But there's always a chance. It's showing here like this is a national average, 5.85. They really overshot on Friday on the uh, on the news of uh, the un or the CPI, and uh, it's possible. And we talked about this Friday with Pat that we see them kind of overshoot and we'll see kind of a slight correction going into Wednesday. But Wednesday is when the Fed is meeting and they meet four times a year and they come out with this bubble chart. This bubble chart is where the Fed people say, well, I think rates are going to be here. I think it's there. And it's a very confusing thing to look at. I, I don't, I never liked bubble charts in my last career and I, I don't like them now. <laughs> Jackie says, Three-day people mess up the true expired numbers, though. Yeah, that's true. They also mess up the coming soon numbers. Um, we could spend an hour on that. But so the Wednesday, we're going to find out if they're not only if they're going to raise 50 BPS or 75. Right now, the market is taken into consideration that there's a possibility that they might raise at 75. If they do, um, we could see another uptick. But more importantly, what are they indicating that they think the future is going to be? Because remember, the mortgage market is based on traders and mortgage-backed securities, you know, saying and treasuries where they think rates are going to be in the future. So sometimes the Fed can come in Wednesday and, and raise a rate, and it doesn't affect mortgages at all. But if they walk away from this, uh, if traders walk away from this meeting that's coming up on Wednesday with a feeling that they're going to get far more aggressive through the summer, I think you're going to see rates shoot up, but I don't. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it's going to be interesting to watch. So uh, we're getting a huge slowdown um, right now in in foot traffic. So you look at uh, Facebook groups, real estate groups, talking about open house traffic. So you've got gas prices really high. People aren't willing to drive around. I don't like doing open houses when it's 110, and I don't think you like going out looking at them when it's 110. So foot traffic is low. Um, Stephanie says here, my problem is I'm currently at 3.1, and I would be going to 5 or over 5. Yeah, you would. So it's not a problem that you're at 3.1. That's pretty good. <laughs> so I think um, in the future, 2023, nobody knows what that brings, but we'll keep tracking the numbers here. Now, I got another article here that's, Kind of interesting. Has nothing to do with real estate. But did you hear that there's a Google engineer 
and stick with me on this. I got to show you this. Google engineer warns the firm's artificial intelligence is sentient. What that means is it's starting to think on its own. And it actually kind of reminded me of 2001 Space Odyssey. You know, uh, don't unplug me, Hal. And uh, so they're saying that this thing is acting like a seven or eight year old and it even threatened him. But here's the funny part. I'm going to scroll down and show you something right here. The future of your world depends on this guy. This is the guy that's been in charge of artificial intelligence. I'll just leave that right there. <laughs> it's getting scary out there, folks. Hey, I help, hope everybody has a great week. Starting the beginning of the week, it's going to be hot. But, but, we got some rain coming Friday and Saturday. That's going to be a nice thing to see. So, have a great Monday. Take on the rest of the week. Take care.